payment. This is a important component for the storage system that I'm developing. This is an item type to binary encoder. What that means is that it will take a item type and give you its corresponding unique binary code down here. Now this particular one is set up to be 12 bits for 1023 items, not 24 because the zero code is reserved for boxes that are uh, not not encoded in, in the system. Now I'll demonstrate it working by, by showing these boxes. So I don't have white encoded, so we should get a zero code for that, but then everything else should have something light up. So what happens is it puts the box into the hopper cart. It will cycle through with a really cool animation and we don't get anything because I didn't encode that. But now we're going to start getting stuff, which we did. And we go on to the next item type. Go the way loopy loop. Next one, I do believe there's one more after this one and then it'll be done. So very, very cool system, quite quick for um, what it's meant to be doing. Uh, it travels a total of 64 chests using the uh, system bolt down here, but we loop it around so in its actual footprint is a lot more smaller. Um, you to explain how it works so before that you can see the boxes come through here and they are the same order as the boxes that came through here so the concept that i'm going for if you remembered from the s5 video is we grouped up these item types and we put breaker items but there's another way that we can do it we can actually grab one box per a s5 silo and then assign the binary codes that come out to each of the uh S bars, or we can just put them into an, an ordered list, which is probably what I'm going to be doing. That would mean that this uh, slot over here is reserved for S bar 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And then that is how we are going to be doing those uh, item type groupings. So we'll, the encoder itself will only operate per, per an item type. Now, how it actually works is pretty interesting. You will notice that there are colors down here that are split into two. So right now this is six. This is another six. We do something called bit grouping where instead of encoding the full um, 12 bits, we encode it based on, well, a group. So we have two six bit groups and when we uh, join them together, we get the total 12 bits. Now I did say this was right now set up to do 1023 item types. 12 bits gets you 4,095 item types. And the reason why I've done it like this is because I want to be able to expand this as um, the game begins to update. So it can do a total of 4,093 uh, unique codes. I should say unique codes, not item types, because um, this is the way I'll be doing things later on. I'll explain that in a different video. But as of now, this particular system is... 1,023 items for 12 bits. You can always change it by not having two 6 bits grouping over here. You can do two 5 bit groupings. And now uh, let me explain a bit about what these groupings actually mean. So, to explain more about this bit grouping, you can imagine it as a way of getting a bigger number of bits by combining a group of smaller bits. So, right now I have two bit groups, each of them are 6 bits. And in order to get my total 12 bits, I would do this row and column system over here. And you can imagine each one of these is a slice. And by activating different combinations of them, I can get my total bits. So right now to get this code, I would not activate my, my row over here. And then I would pick a column. And by doing the same thing again, I can get my next, next code and my next code. Uh, bit grouping is quite interesting because it minimizes the number of chests that's required to encode a single item type. So right now, each of these, each, for every group that you have, there will probably be one item type, uh, or one item per an item type in it. So right now, if I have two bit groups, I usually have around two item types. I mean, two items per an item type. And that allows me to do further optimizations, which I'll show later. But these bit groupings don't have to be this way. You can do it in a different fashion. So for example, in Melon Tech Storage, uh, we have one bit group that is three bits for 
ice stream selection and the second bit group is seven bits for the um ice selection and the reason why we do that is because we want to be able to know whether the uh, ice streams uh, corresponding to the current item type is being occupied by a different item type and if it is we don't actually have to go through the uh, slice selection we can just hold off on the, those boxes until um we can send them so bit grouping does do a lot of different types of optimizations depending on what you you need so i'll link palapala's uh encoder in the description below his system uses 10 bits uh grouping where it's a uh, one bit and then yeah so 10 one bit then he had 10 bits in total so by concatenating the two lower bit groups we are able to get our total uh, bits per an item type now to showcase the system one last time um, I'll put the box in and let me pick freeze so what's happening is that while we do the first bit group we get the uh, code for that but then when we do the second bit group we're actually resetting the first bit group while we are uh, checking for the second bit group and that is the first optimization the second one is by doing bit grouping we minimize the number of chests that is required for the uh, 800 or 900 different item types that are currently in the game like 1.16 1.17 will maybe be almost a thousand i think not quite sure don't remember i'd like to give a big special thanks though to nick from ntech and that nerd from prototech for creating the optimization script required to figure out the best bit grouping for the number of item types that um i want to be putting into the story system so i'll link their discords in the description below and you can ping them and annoy them about that uh but yeah so by doing this bit grouping we minimize the number of chests we reset the bottom bit group while we are encoding the second one and the next uh um the optimization is that you can see we did a little bit of a pause there and that's because we use that pause to grab the item out when we are encoding the second bit group and we use this dropper elevator to reset the second bit group so that kind of means that the only reset required or reset delay required for uh doing a different the next item type is just grabbing that one item out and then shooting it through so that's kind of around one second so if you were to imagine this is currently a 64 length piston bolt that's around three ish seconds and then a constant one second reset so to get the full code it's around four ish seconds if you were to extend this to the full length that i wanted to do it which will be around seven ish seconds for the piston bolt again plus one second will be around eight seconds per code so it's quite fast quite good and quite efficient um there is one more feature yep there's one more feature so i'm able to code these items separately from a um choker box the reason why i'm doing that is for some other features that i plan on be implementing in which I'll talk, I guess I'll talk about in a different video but it can do loose items uh, properly and it uses the droppers and know that so even if you were to put something silly like TNT it will, it will work properly now to actually see the uh, slice activating uh, this one's quite straightforward when you take the items out uh, the torch she activates now the reason why there is two instead of one even though I said that one works properly is because of issues where if you were to unload the system it is possible to have an empty slot here and then a different thing can come in and then mess up your encoding so this is just mostly to protect the encoder in case of an unload now this top um this over here is quite interesting because not only do we unlock the the hopper over here to yeah over here to suck out the item and reset the chest but we also need to tell the uh, front end system over here that we are um, resetting the top chest and that is to activate the, 
the hopper down here, which will reset the the top top layer. So if I were to show a system that does not reset. You will notice that that never turns on or off, and that's to protect the system from not ripping out one of these uh, block items. So very cool stuff, very interesting. And yeah, that's about it. So the actual storage system that I'm working on will be using the uh, 4000 item one version of this uh, encoder, which is basically just doubling the number of chests um, that way. So right now this one's 32 long, it will be 64 long, and 64 long, 12 bits, 4,000 something item types, or 4,000 different codes would be good for pretty much many, many years of, of Minecraft updates. Unless Mojang breaks the redstone.